Down goes Cameron. Down goes Cameron. This is a live look at the campaign party for Kentucky Governor Democrat Andy Bashir. He has defeated black Republican Daniel Cameron for the governor's race. Daniel Cameron didn't do a damn thing in the Breonna Taylor case. Uh, folks there uh, campaigned against him. He apparently is running behind even other Republicans who are running statewide. Joining us right now is Tamika Mallory, co-founder of Until Freedom. Uh, they spent a lot of time, energy, money, resources there on the ground in Kentucky. Uh, I know you tired. I know you want a nap, but I know you are overjoyed. Cameron loses. Yeah, absolutely. You know, first of all, Roland, I just want to say thank you to you. Uh, you've been with us for the entire three plus years that we've been here in Kentucky uh, when no one else would cover, when things would get quiet. We could always depend on you uh, to make sure that our, our stories and, and the work of what we were doing here in Kentucky was uplifted. And I'm on all your text threads, and I know that you make sure everybody else knows uh, what we've been doing at Until Freedom. Three and a half years ago, we came to Kentucky, and we promised Breonna Taylor's family that we would be here until the end. And for us, the end wasn't just uh, the protest movement, and then once there was no indictment, um, you know, by the, st the state of Kentucky, we could have gone home, but we stayed to ensure that there were federal indictments. And now we're in federal court, which you and I talked about last week on your show. Um, and so that is an ongoing process. But tonight was very important for us because we understand that protests and politics must be aligned. And in this situation, uh, we were we knew that what Daniel Cameron did to Breonna Taylor was wrong. Um, we knew that that we had to stand up and make sure that other black folks in the state of Kentucky would not believe that just because he's a black man, he's in a fraternity, his mother is in a sorority. We wanted to make sure that they did not believe that we could drop the ball or believe somehow that Daniel Cameron was a viable candidate for governor of this state. He did wrong by Breonna Taylor, but he also disrespected and violated the rights of all the citizens of Kentucky and particularly those jurors who had every right, every single right, to make a decision about the fate of the officers for killing Breonna Taylor specifically. So we did not want him to be governor. He does not deserve to be promoted. And he needed to be washed up. We need to make sure he didn't get beat just by a small margin, but that he was beat in, at large numbers so that we could make a, 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 a signal to him and every other black person, particularly who would dare to disrespect our community and to disrespect black women, that we as the people will not be defeated that when we rise up and when we organize, we can win. And I think going forward, what we have been able to uh, do here in Kentucky is a model that has to be all across this nation, that we cannot just get in the streets and put boots on the ground, which is important, but we must go to the polls and use our voting power to make the final point and finish the job. You said something that's critically important. I talk about it all the time. Uh, and I've heard others say, if you're out there protesting and then you're not engaged in the election, all you're doing uh, is taking a walk, shouting and yelling. You cannot say we need to change policies if you don't change the policy makers. Uh, and so and and look. This the work that y'all did. It wasn't it wasn't about, hey, go Andy Bashir. What it was what it was about was here is a evil man supported by Donald Trump who sold black people out, who did nothing, who lied to the grand jury and who need to be penalized and not rewarded for not doing his job as the attorney general of Kentucky. Absolutely. He needed to be penalized. We had to put him in his place and let him know that the power of the people matters. And I think he felt that folks would be unengaged uh, or disengaged, that people wouldn't be paying attention. But as organizers, and you know, some people feel like until freedom is some new thing that just popped up. But I personally and, and my, my colleagues, we have a combined number of years in this work. But I personally have 30 years in this game. And I know 
know how it works. I know that um, once you protest, the next thing is you got to get to registering voters. You need to address the social concerns of any community, even while protesting. Because even when we moved to Kentucky for uh, four months in the middle of a pandemic to be a part of the protest community, we fed people 4,000 meals, 4,000 boxes, excuse me, of groceries was were giving out and distributed all across communities, uh, impoverished communities within the Kentucky area and specifically Louisville, Kentucky. We also made sure that we held conferences, we held events, we held parties. We did everything necessary to make sure that the community came together. And those networks worked in this election because those same people who never met one another before, but because of Breonna Taylor, because of the work happening on the ground, because of the work of Until Freedom, they came together, they became family, and they stayed together throughout this election. So again, when we look at, and and, and I, I even have to say with the Democratic Party, there is a disrespect that happens to organizers where people feel they don't necessarily need us or they don't need to invest in us financially. They don't need to make sure that we have the resources we need to do our work. But hopefully after tonight, people will know, because by the way, the Democratic Party did not weigh in heavy here in Kentucky. I've been here since Labor Day weekend, and I can tell you that there were holes, many holes, and it's always that way. You know that uh, black organizers and, and other communities always fill in the holes, but there were serious craters left unaddressed in the state of Kentucky. And we crisscrossed this state. We went to where black people are. We opened an office here. We raised our own money. We didn't get a dime from the Democratic Party to do anything in this election, but we did it because it was right. We worked with our resources and the people who support us. And hopefully, as we move towards 2024, the Democrats will understand, not in the presidential, not just presidential level, but all throughout this country, that without organizers and people with boots on the ground, you are in trouble in terms of being able to win contentious races. Mustafa. Well, Tamika, it's good to see you. Um, I, I know all the energy that's went into making this moment become a reality. What's the next step uh, as we move forward toward 2024? I'm so glad you asked. I can tell a you that. Uh, 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 hold up. Tamika, Tamika, after you get some rest. Well, I was going to say <laughs> that I want to go home and go to sleep. <laughs> my mail is piling up. My family <laughs> members miss me. You know, my mom, she's just three years after having a stroke and needs my, she, she keeps saying, come on by when you get a chance. So I really need to return home and take care of my family. And Roland, I promise you, I said, I'm leaving Kentucky and I'm going to take a break. Then we went out to register voters, and we found out that one in three black men in the state of Kentucky have a felony conviction and cannot vote. Uh, Andy Bashir, he, uh, uh, what is it called, y'all? The word about, he, he, uh, restored. There you go. He restored. The whole team is here rolling. They're on right. the other side of the camera. But he restored the voting rights of over 200,000 uh, formerly co or convicted felons or people with felony convictions. Let me make sure I say that right. Um, he, he restored their voting rights. And so many of them have gone to the polls in this election. However, in the last numbers, we know that only about 60,000 registered and only 10,000 of those individuals have gone to the polls. So we did some work and really were specifically focused with uh, my son and, and Angelo, attorney Angelo Pinto, on focusing in on that community, along with local organizers who specifically do work around formerly incarcerated folks. However, there are still many more. As we were out registering people, too many black men said, I can't vote. So as soon as I thought I was going home to rest, I realized that we've got to work with uh, Representative Katora Haran and others who who are committed to restoring the rights, the voting rights of people who have felony convictions here in the state. And so, you know, even the office that we were going to close down today, there was conversations about whether or not it needs to stay open to be a hub for expungement work uh, that will be led by our brothers yep. at yep. Until Freedom. Mignon. So thank you again for all of the work that you're doing out there. I know you must be exhausted, but 
ecstatic because it's lovely to see the other side and the fruits of your labor. And the question that I have for you is those of us that are, well, not, I'm not viewing, but those that are at home viewing and watching this right now, what are some of what, what are some ways that they can actually become involved in your work that to help lift, you know, lighten the load that you're doing there in Kentucky and in other places, but specifically in Kentucky, because it sounds like it sounds like there's still a bit of an uphill climb over there. As soon as you turn over one rock, you find something else underneath there. So what can the general public do to support you? Absolutely. And so the one conversation I never like to have, but I'm always being told by Roland and others, and of course, uh, Linda Sarsour, who's here with me, um, is making sure that I save money. I hate to say, I, that's like the one thing that if I had all the money in the world, I'd fund my own movements and I would never ask for a dime. But I can tell you that our work is, it's impossible for us to do what we do without money. We've been flying back and forth to Kentucky for three and a half years, but specifically since Labor Day, in and out of town, it's very expensive. If you bought a plane ticket in the last two months, you know that it is outrageous. And we've been back and forth here maybe 10 times over two months to be in, in town. Death threats against my life. Even yesterday, the FBI called me saying, hey, we just want to let you know that there's more chatter out there. There have been more calls into the city with death threats on my life and therefore security. Security is one of the most expensive bills that we have, just trying to say to stay safe. How we live, how we sleep, how we eat, it costs money. But now we need to, we put out a lot of money. I already told you that we did not receive any special or big donation from any particular Democrat that's, you know, the high level fundraisers and donors. I hear people saying that all the time. I'm like, damn, that sounds so good, but that's not our situation. We raise money from everyday people. We put a lot of money into Kentucky over these last uh, few months, um, and over the last several years, but certainly in this, this, this particular time, this GOTV time. Now we need to replenish so that when January January starts, we can get back here, and for the next year, we can continue to work. So over the next 30 days, we're going to be working to raise um, a quarter of a million dollars to at least replenish some of the resources that we spent here and make sure that when we start in January, we're not in the deficit, but instead we have some resources to do our work. You can go to untilfreedom.com. It's the best way to give. It's untilfreedom.com. It's through our Act Blue. It's safe and it's secure, but if you don't want to do that, you can go to until freedom on cash app and venmo now by the way you have to be sure that you are putting in just until freedom because there are people imposters who are using my picture they're using the until freedom logo they got two u's two l's you know different ways that they have been able to redirect resources to them and not us so until freedom.com is the easiest best most secure way to get us your donation and by the way $5, $10, $15, all of it counts. There is a woman who has been sending $50 a week to us at Until Freedom mm -hmm. for the last two years. And we appreciate it. When her check didn't come two times, I was worried because we need though we need that donation. $50 feeds someone. $50 pays the cell phone bills. $50 pays the credit card bills. So please, whatever you have, please help us to continue to do what we do. You know the results are there. It's working. We're doing our our job. We haven't stopped. We've got a federal indictment that happened because the people stayed on the job. We did not allow the feds to forget right. about Breonna Taylor. And now you also have us winning an election. We're letting you know that we're sophisticated in our organizing. We are not just, and I'm not knocking anybody that's, that's a protester because there were protesters out there with us and without them, we could never have been able to get to this point. But we as organizers are very very sophisticated in our understanding of how all of these things connect, but we cannot go and ask a corporation to fund us while we do this work. We've got to be free black people who are able, free black and brown people and other people who are able to get out there and speak truth to power and not have to answer to anybody for the work that we're trying to get done. That's right. That's right. Larry, real quick, Larry. Yeah, real quick, can you talk about the importance of this of, a, of investing now and with seeing the flowers grow two, four, six, eight, ten years from now? 
Absolutely. I mean, first of all, we've stopped something that we saw coming. We knew that Daniel Cameron wasn't just going to be the governor of Kentucky. What Daniel Cameron is trying to usher in is really adjacent to what we see happening in Florida, where Ron DeSantis is governor. I mean, by the way, yes, we talked about uh, his his issues with Breonna Taylor and the obstruction to justice in that case. But his 12 point plan, getting rid of uh, civilian complaint review boards where folks would not have a, a remedy for filing complaints against police. He wanted to, he wanted to give um, the, the death penalty to drug dealers. I mean, this man, he's, at, he's the cousin of Ron DeSantis. He is a Trump-endorsed uh, candidate, or he was a Trump-endorsed candidate. This man is out of his mind, as far as we're concerned, to be a black person who would have the type of policies that would only challenge us. When you start talking about drug dealers, okay, fine. If you feel, if you're one of these people, because I have black folks, saying, well, I kind of understand with drug dealers, we don't want them in our community. But then what are you going to do about pharmaceutical companies that are selling more drugs than any Pookie or Ray Ray on a street corner? You don't have a plan to deal with those individuals at all. All you want to do is criminalize our people. And so when you talk about six to 10 years from now, we were put, if he would have become governor of Kentucky, I could see him running for president as a black man with the values that he has and potentially winning. So we had to stop him in his tracks. So now he doesn't have a job as attorney general. And he also is, he will have to go circle back and figure out how he tries to come back around to running for a larger office in this, in this state. And of course, in the country. Folks, a few months ago, this was said by Daniel Cameron. That made this win a reality. And of course, a big thank you to President Donald J. Trump for his support and his endorsement of this campaign. Let me just say, let me just say, the Trump culture of winning is alive and well in Kentucky. Well, the Trump culture of taking that ale is alive and well tonight. Congratulations to Mika Mallory, Linda Sarsour, my son, the whole Until Freedom team. Y'all did a fantastic job. Uh, and Daniel Cameron, take your punk ass home. <laughs> That's uh, it. Love to you all. Thank you so much. God, take care. Peace out. Uh, th th this right here, uh, to close this out, uh, Mignon, Mustafa, and Larry, you heard Tamika say it, and it's critically important. You can't just bitch and moan, yell and scream, tweet, post on TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. You can't do all of those different things. Uh, you must be fully engaged in this process. And I'm going to do final comments. Here's the thing that's most important. This is called the fruits of the labor. They put the work in and you see the results. They stopped him. And now guess what? They can go to Andy Bashir and say, you're a Democrat. We made it possible for you to win. You should be restoring the voting rights to more formerly incarcerated people. Final comments. Larry, go. Yeah, so, you know, we, so far it's been a historic night. Let's hopefully see what we've seen happens in Virginia and some of the other jurisdictions. But it's really important, once again, have these grassroots organizations fund them, let them do the work, and get out of their way. Mignon. Power of our people. That's that's the moral to the story tonight that we saw. These are ordinary people that are that are extraordinary citizens and extraordinary beings that are really invested in in the well-being and the the liberation of Black folks. And they have proven to us the type of power that we really have, especially to me, to be just just in, in the last segment. They have proven to us illustrated to us, demonstrated to us that we have the power to affect the change that we want to. We just got to get in the game. And it's just like what Barack Obama used to say, don't boo, vote. We got to vote. Mustafa. Grab your power, use your power, and build upon your power. It's that simple. If we do that, we can make change happen in our community. <laughs>